good morning students of class 5 students i'm sure all of you are happy and healthy students please take out your wordsworth english reader book and turn to page number 85 as i'll be continuing with poem 4 for foreign lands composed by robert louis stevenson students please take out your wordsworth english reader book and turn to page number 85 as i'll be continuing with exercise a of comprehension of poem 4 for foreign lands composed by robert louis stevenson students in my last video i had started with exercise a and i finished the first six sentences of exercise a now before i continue with the seventh one i'm going to recite the poem foreign lands for you please listen to me carefully poem for foreign lands by robert louis stevenson up into the cherry tree who should climb but little me i held the trunk with both my hands and looked abroad on foreign lands i saw the next door garden lie adorned with flowers before my eye and many pleasant places more that i had never seen before i saw the dimpling river pass and be the skies blue looking glass the dusty roads go up and down with people tramping into town if i could find a taller tree farther and farther i should see to where the grown up river slips into the sea among the ships to where the roads on either hand lead onward into fairy land where all the children dine at 5 and all the playthings come alive students this was the poem now let's revise the word meanings also the first word is trunk which means stem of a tree the second word is abroad which means in different directions the third word is adorned which means decorated the fourth word is dimpling which means covered to form indentations like dimples the fifth word is dusty which means covered with dust the sixth word is tramping which means walking over a long distance tiredly the seventh word is father which means over a large expanse of space the eighth word is slips which means to move the ninth word is either which means each of two the tenth word is hand which means sides the eleventh word is onward which means forward the twelfth word is dying which means to eat dinner and the 13th word is play things which means toys now i'm going to start with exercise a of comprehension first i'm going to revise the six uh, sentences then i'm going to write the seventh one and so exercise a the poet climbs up a tree and is filled with wonder at the things he can see can you recount them the first one the poet could see a dash next door which was full of dash so the poet was the poet could see a garden please write garden in the first blank next door which was full of flowers so write flowers in the second blank write g a r d e n garden in the first blank of the first sentence and flowers in the second blank f l o w e r s flowers then the second one he saw a dash river which seemed to mirror the dash sky so he saw a dimpling river right d i m p l i n g dimpling river which seemed to mirror the blue sky right blue in the second blank that is b l u e so right dimpling d i m p l i n g dimpling is the first blank of the second sentence and blue in the second blank of the second sentence so he saw a dimpling river which seemed to mirror the blue sky the third one 
the roads were dash and the people were dash on it on their way to dash the roads were dusty right dusty d u s t y in the first plank of the third sentence the roads were dusty and people were tramping t r a m p i n g tramping on it on their way to town t o w n town so right dusty in the first plank of the third sentence tramping in the second blank that is t r a m p i n g tramping in the second blank on it on their way to town town in the third blank so the roads were dusty and the people were tramping on it on their way to town the fourth one he thinks that if he could climb a taller tree he would be able to see much farther f a r t h e r farther so write farther in the blank of the fourth sentence fifth one he would be able to see where the dash slips river r i v e r river slips into the sea s e a c among the ships so write river in the first blank of the fifth one and see in the second blank so he would be able to see where the river slips into the sea among the ships then the sixth one perhaps he would also be able to follow roads to horizon from where they lead into fairy land right fairy land in the sixth sentence plank that is f a i r y fairy l a n d land so perhaps he would also be able to follow roads to the horizon from where they lead into the fairy land now the seven one a poet would know for sure then that in this make believe world in this make believe world comma the dash time at 5 when they go to bed all our toys come dash now the seventh sentences the poet would know for sure now when the poet he is able to follow the roads which go to the horizon horizon means the place where the earth and sky seem to meet it's an imaginary place but you call it horizon and there that roads lead to the fairy land and in the fairy land the poet would know kaha pe beta in the fairy land the poet would know for sure that in this make believe world hai na ye make believe world hai hai na that means it is not real the make believe world means the world which is not real the dash dine at 5 who dine at 5 the children right children in the first blank of the seventh sentence the children dine dine means to have dinner or eat dinner right at 5 in the evening generally uh, children you all eat food around 8 at night but in the fairy land the poet believes ha huh, that the children they dine at 5 and they go to bed and when they go to bed what happens all the toys jitne bhi toys toys don't have life 
But here the poet believes that all the toys they come alive. वो उनमें life आ जाती है when the children go to sleep. So here you will write alive in the last blank. Fine. So our sentence will be the poet would know for sure that that in this make believe world the children they have dinner at five. When they go to bed, all the toys come alive. है ना? That all the toys जो वो हैं उनमें life आ जाती है. Hmm? This is what the poet believes. Fine. So students, with this we have finished exercise A of comprehension. Now, if one more thing. Now students, if you combine these seven sentences and write. these sentences in the form of a paragraph this will be the summary of the poem fine aap ye poem ke summary ke jaise likh sakte if you uh, write the seven points as a paragraph now i'll read the points as a paragraph and that will be the summary of the poem so please listen to me carefully the poet could see a garden next door which was full of flowers He saw a dimpling river which seemed to mirror the blue sky. The roads were dusty and the people were tramping on it on their way to the town. He thinks that if he could climb a taller tree he would be able to see much farther. He would be able to see where the river slips into the sea among the ships. Perhaps he would also be able to follow roads to the horizon. from where they lead into the fairy land the poet would know for sure then that this is the make believe world where the children dine at 5 and when they go to bed all the toys come alive now students this will be the summary but initially you will have to add one more line that in this poem the child he climbs up a cherry tree and from the cherry tree he sees many pleasant say and after that you will continue with the summary fine once again i'll read it out for you so that the summary gets more clear to you in the poem foreign lands the poet imagines himself as a child who is climbing a cherry tree and after climbing the cherry tree he holds the trunk of the tree with both the hands and then he is looking around he is looking around many pleasant things and from the cherry tree the poet could see a garden next door which was full of flowers he saw dimpling rivers which seemed to mirror the blue sky the roads were dusty and people were tramping on it on the way to town He thinks that if he could climb a taller tree he would be able to see much farther. He would be able to see where the river slips into the sea among the ships. Perhaps he would also be able to follow roads to the horizon from where they lead into the fairy land. The poet would know for sure then that in this make believe world the children dine at 5 and when they go to bed all our toys come alive so students by combining these sentences and adding one more line in the beginning you can use these sentences as the summary of the poem so students with this we have finished exercise a and now i'm going to start with exercise b of foreign plants and those who have watched the videos now i am sure all of you can write the summary by combining these seven sentences right now exercise b is answer the following questions briefly and the first question 
question is where does the poet Clive? Now, if what is the first question, students? Where does the poet climb? So all of us know because we have read the poem. In the poem, students, you can see up into the cherry tree. First line of the first stanza of the poem, up into the cherry tree. This tells us that where does the poem poet climb, students? Answer is... The poet climbs up into the cherry. Where does the poet climb? Answer is the poet climbs up into the cherry tree. Where does the poet climb? The poet climbs. Beta in the question does is there which tells us that this answer has to be written in simple present tense. And what is the rule of simple present tense? The subject verb agreement if you remember. If the subject is singular we will add S to the word. So, the poet climbs. Question mein does hai. Ye indicate kar raha hai beta ki hamara jo answer hai wo simple present tense mein hoga. And jaise simple present tense you hear, immediately it should click you ki simple present tense mein to subject to our background hai. If the subject is singular, we will add S to the word. So, poet yaan pe singular hai. So, we have to climb mein S. Laga diya, hai na? So, you need to keep this in mind. And question mein agar did hoga, that uh, tells you that you need to write the answer in past tense. Verb aapka past tense mein hoga. Ya question mein does hai, to aapka jo verb hai wo simple present tense mein hoga. And simple present tense mein you need to look at the subject and then accordingly as per the subject verb agreement you need to Add or remove S. If the subject is plural, no S in the word. If the subject is singular, you need to add S to the word. So, our answer is the poet climbs up into the cherry tree. Which poet did, uh, which tree did the poet climb? The cherry tree. Hai na? So, the poet climbs up into the cherry tree. So, where does the poet climb? Answer is the poet climbs up into the cherry tree. I hope all of you have written and students please don't forget to draw a parting line after each answer. So please draw a parting line with a scale and pencil after each answer and class 5 students please ensure you are a big students that you always begin a sentence with a capital letter and end with a full stop. I have seen uh, Class 5 students, starting the sentence with a small letter. Please do not do that. Fine. Please always begin the sentence with a capital letter and end with the full stop. So, again I am repeating question 1 and the answer and then I will be erasing it. So, question 1, where does the poet climb? Answer, the poet climbs up into the cherry tree. And remember, again I am repeating if does is there in the question, this tells you that you need to answer the question in simple present tense. Simple present tense immediately should click you the subject word agreement. So the poet is singular, so we need to add S to the word. So our answer is the poet climbs up into the cherry tree. I hope all of you have written the first question and answer children. Now I am going to erase this and write the second question. But please keep in mind that 
you need to draw a parting line after each answer. Now, the second question. There is space so I can write. Give you some more time to write. What did the poet hold? Now what did the poet hold? Now the poet climbs up cherry tree. He is on to a cherry tree. Now the second question is what did the poet hold? So if he is on a cherry tree, lose your common sense. Ped pe chadega to kya pakdega? Hai na? The trunk of the tree. Hai na? So agar koi bhi ped pe chadega, to apna balance banane ke liye wo ped ki dal ko hi pakdega. Aur ped ki dal ko English mein hum kya bolte hai? Trunk. Hai na? So what did the poet hold? Now relate karo. Ki poet agar tree pe chada hai, obviously he is going to hold the trunk of the tree. So our answer will be. Now the question aapka did hai. So as explained earlier, if did is there in the question, this indicates that you need to write the verb in the past tense. Hold hai, verb. Hold calm past tense kya hota hai beta? Held. So our answer will be the poet held. Ye beta yaad rakna hai. Did and does. Fine. The poet held the trunk of the cherry with both his hands. Now, answer number two is what did the poet hold? Jaisi yaha pe dust tha, to humne apne answer kis mein likha? Simple present tense mein. Answer ka matlab word. Khali Tense mein the verb changes. Just remember this. Hai na? Simple present tense mein tha to subject singular tha to verb mein s lag gaya. Now, abhi in the second question, question mein did hai. Did kya indicate kar raha hai ki aapka verb kis mein aana chahiye? Past tense mein. Verb kya tha? Hold. Hold ka past tense kya ho gaya? Held. H-E-L-D. Held. So, what did the poet hold? The answer is the poet held the trunk of the cherry tree with both his hands. The poet held the trunk of the cherry tree with both his hands. What did the poet hold? The poet held the trunk of the cherry tree with both his hands. Poet cherry tree pe climb kya hua tha? So it was obvious ki wo cherry tree ki trunk hi hold karega apne both the hands se to maintain his balance on the tree. Otherwise, he would fall down. Fine. So question one. Where does the poet climb? The answer is the poet climbs up into the cherry tree. Question two. What did the poet hold? Answer is the poet held the trunk of the cherry tree with both his hands. Now if suppose the question comes. Why did he held the trunk of the cherry tree with both the hands? So simply you can write, he held the trunk of the cherry tree with both the hands to maintain his balance on the tree. Otherwise, he would fall down. Fine. So, and remember students, does or did a question may aiga. In ke hisab se, aapka verb change ho. And verb may aap present tense hamesha does ke saath use hota hai and did ke saath hum concert tense use karte hai children. Past tense. Fine. So, where does the poet climb? Answer, the poet climbs up into the cherry tree. Question 2, what did the poet hold? Answer 2, the poet held the trunk of the cherry tree with both his hands. Please draw a parting line after the second answer also. 
I hope students all of you have written. Now I am going to erase this and write the third question. Question number three. Why was the poet happy on seeing the pleasant places. Now, the next question is why was the poet happy on seeing the pleasant places? Now, the answer is poet happy cute tha? Itni pleasant places dekhne ke liye. What all he saw from the top of the cherry tree? He saw a garden next door which was blooming with flowers and decorated with flowers. Adorned word is used. Adorned means decorated. So he saw a beautiful garden in the next door. Beautiful garden in next door which was decorated. That means which was blooming with flowers. Then he saw a river dimpling and he saw as if the uh, River was the mirror for the blue sky and he had seen more things which he had never seen before and all those things were very pleasant to look at and they filled the poet with joy. So why was the poet happy on seeing this? Because he had never seen those things before. Pehle kabhi bhi usne wo sari cheeze dekhi nahi thi. Because we all know ki ground se hum bahut jyada nahi dekh sakte hai. Hai na? There are many obstacles which block our view. But if we climb a tallest structure, humko dur dur ki cheeze dikhai degi. Hai na? And agar kuch achhi cheeze dikhai degi, jo humne pehle kabhi nahi dekha tha, obviously it will make us happy. So our answer will be The poet was happy on seeing the pleasant places because he had never seen them Before. Now, question number three. Why was the poet happy on seeing the pleasant places? The answer is the poet was happy on seeing the pleasant places because he had never seen them before. Because usse pehle to poet ne un sari chijo ko dekha hi nahi tha. So he had never seen them before. So answer 3 is the poet was happy on seeing the pleasant places because he had never seen them before. Fine. So students I hope all of you have written these three questions in your English notebook and after each 
answer you all have drawn the parting line so students please recite the poem and revise the taught exercises and try to write the summary by combining the seven sentences of exercise a of comprehension and please complete these three question and answers in your english notebook that's all for today students i'll be continuing the rest of the question and answers in my next video thank you students have a good day ahead